Coming up under center for the Hawks. And it's going to be a handoff on the right side. Over tackle. And Turk sniffed, sniffed that one out well. And it looks like it comes up for about a yard loss. Mm. <laughs> All right, no gain. No gain on the respot there. Hardwick with the tackle. Almost same play over the right side and met effectively again by the Turks there on the left side of the defensive line. Looks like a loss of about one. It's going to bring up third and about 12 for the, for the Hawks. All right, now correction, no gain on the play. So third and 10 for the Hawks. They are at the, uh, their own 39-yard line. Brought up to the Hawks turn under the direction of quarterback number 11, Elijah Dahlman. He's a junior. And in a shotgun formation, split backs. Dahlman back to pass. Over the middle, wide open is number four. Makes the catch, still on his feet. One man to beat, and he gets him. Drops him at the 15-yard line. But a big play for the Hawks. It's going to take them all the way down to the Turk 15 in the red zone just that quickly. And tackled by Bennett for the Turks. So broken coverage there, number four for the Hawks. That is uh, Rocco Tavore was was wide open on that. So nice catch run by that young man. But uh, again, a saving tackle for the Turks. So first and ten for the Hawks. <coughs> and take, take that back spot is at the ten-yard line. <coughs> My mistake. Here we got a Oh, offsides in the defense. That was kind of a interesting formation. Looked like almost like a wildcat. Thought originally it might have been an illegal formation, but they do call uh, defensive offsides against the Turks, so that will move them closer. Now it's first and five from the five. So Salton facing an early test here. High snap. Taken and plunged in. That's going to be number two, Jordan Sims. And just that quickly with 10 minutes exactly remaining on the clock, the uh, Hawks strike first and lead this game now 6 nothing. And they're going to line up for the PAT. Kicking for the Hawks, number 67. That is Noah Thompson lining up. And typically you do not see an offensive defensive line and that is your kicker, but in this case we do. And does a nice job, kicks it through the uprights and good. And just that quickly, the Hawks strike first. They lead this now 7-0. All right, and they're going to go back, and we'll kick this and start all over again. The Turks are going to get their first opportunity with the ball here with still lots of time remaining in the first period. want to remind everybody that next week, Turks go on the road to Granite Falls, and then we'll be back here the following week to finish up the season versus Kings High School. All right, Thompson, who did the PAT, is going to line up and kick it off here. And like I said, typically you don't see somebody at 6'6", 260 pounds that's your kicker, but in their case, he did a nice job on that PAT, so we'll see how he does on a kickoff here. And punches it kind of low, but fairly deep. Fielded cleanly by the Turks, going to run it out. And tripped up at the 30-yard line. Brian, you're back. I am back. You were gone for a whole two minutes, and 
uh, look what and look and what look, happened. Look I, what I happened. should never. I should never Don't leave. leave again. All right. Well, you can't leave. Well, okay, we, gotta, we were we were having you, you jinxed us here. We were having some difficulties. Technical with, difficulties. Technical difficulties with our stream, and um, we are we are back now. And we're back. We're, okay. So again, hopefully you caught some of some of that action. But if you're a Turk fan, it wasn't really good stuff to to look at. Long completion by the Hawks. Got them down, and a couple of plays later they did score, and they now lead 7 nothing. First opportunity for the Turks with the ball. Handoff on the left side. Breaks a couple of tackles, still on his feet. And nice game. Caden Hard Yards Hardwick with the yard. Hardwick. First down. First down. Nice for hard running there by Hardwick. All right. I see you guys are all make, making, it, making it back to the stream. We apologize. We've had some technical difficulties for... Those of you that are. But uh, the video looks great, though. What I'm seeing here looks oh, really clean. Looks very nice. All right. First and ten again for the Turks. Man in motion. Hand off up the middle, and that's sniffed out well by the Hawks. No gain on the play. That Met by a, a host of Hawks on that, on that play. Caden Hard Yards Hardwick. Uh, we do give him eked out just a one yard gain, so it's coming up second and nine for the hometown Turks. And well, it's homecoming. It's homecoming week, homecoming game. Welcome everybody to the broadcast. That's right. We'd like we, to welcome all yeah. former alumni and, uh, here that may have joined us tonight, no matter he, near or far. We've had some. Gets the end around. And still on his feet, fighting hard for yardage. Oh. Sailor staying on his feet and, and grinding out about six six or so yards. Yep, Zane Sailor. Hard running there by Sailor. Third and three, just short of the 50-yard line there for the Turks. Is Trying this four-down territory? Boy, you know, it's pretty early. We're still eight minutes from in the first <laughs> quarter. I, I think let's let's hold off on that. Yeah, let's hold off on that. I, I think it's four-yard territory. Uh, I have four-down territory. Do we, do we, are we going to start running like the, the, the reason, flea, the flea flicker in the Statue of Liberty next there's year? A, there's a reason I'm in the booth and not coaching. <laughs> Hard not yards. The middle. There, he's got a first down. And good aggressive running. Hardwick. So Hardwick getting some good... Hard-earned yards here. He is a 5'11", 190-pound junior. And it brings the ball into Hawks territory at the Malik Terrace 45. First and 10 for the Turks. I want to say thank you to all of our, all of our uh, viewers out there for finding your way to us. However you got here. Yeah. It, that it's just important that you're here. Yeah, we care we not. We are glad you we, are here. We care not how you found us, but just Aiden, that you found us. Aiden Fleming, Aiden Lumberjack Fleming, getting hard yards on that one. Second and seven for the Turks. And the Turks so far have impressed. They've been able to move the ball on the ground. Have yet to attempt to pass, so they're really trying to establish that run game, and it's working so far. They've got themselves a couple of first downs and, and are moving the ball consistently down the field. Hand off on the left side. Oh, hit by a, a host like of box. Pick up a yard there. Yeah. That was Caden Hard Yards. I mean, hard, Hardwick. Yeah. Hard Yard, Hardwick. And we And just just a few technical things for you. Yes, Dan. yes, we sir. Have, we have four cameras and going tonight. We have an on-field camera, and we got all kinds of cool things going. Yes, we do, and that's courtesy of our technology. And Benny, back to pass. Gets uh, yeah, uh, nice only, short little gain. Only a couple of yards on that. So these two teams have a lot of similarities, Brian. We were chatting about it briefly before we started the broadcast. Um, Salton coming in at 1-4. Um, Malik Terrace at one and three. Now they would have had a, a they are one game short because again, 
Uh, they had uh, Anacortes High School on their schedule earlier this season, but Anacortes made a late decision not to have high school football this year, so that just en ended as a, a bye week, basically, for them. So they only have four total games versus the five the Turks come in with. Hardwick. Oh, Caden Hard Yards. Oh, we got a late penalty flag. Way to go, Caden Hard Yards. It's going to be a personal foul I, here, I think. And both these teams have a lot of similarities. Both have one pretty lopsided victory on their schedule. And then the other games just really haven't gone the, the way of either of these two teams. So both teams really looking for a victory tonight uh, to kind of help you know write their season and get them on a positive note as we, as we get into the, the final quarter of the season here. Absolutely. Well, you know, I think the Turks are doing what they need to be doing. They need to establish the run. Mm -hmm. That's they need to shorten the game and they need to score every time they get the ball. Because, you yes. know, ultimately, in order to win the game, you've got to score more points. Yes. And the team that scores more points usually wins, right? Yeah, that's usually how that works. That's a Ron Fairleyism for you right there. <laughs> Aiden Fleming on the, short on the carry the there. No gain on the yeah, play. Yeah, no gain. Oh, we'll give him a yard. <laughs> we'll give him a yard. Taylor on the reverse. And yeah, still on his feet. Nice running there. That was a good play. That was. Sailor just bobbing and weaving and juking and staying on his feet and making some good yards. So, hey, everybody out there watching, uh, thank you for finding your way back to TurkPride.tv and finding your way back to, this, to the stream. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you and know where if you're if you can go to the chat room. We'd love to hear from you and know where you're watching from and who your athlete is. We'll give you a shout out on the air. And uh, if, even if you're from LA Terrace, we still we, we still want to hear from you. Yes, we do. We, uh, we know you love your kids as much as we love ours. First and goal from the six for the Turks, Brian. So opportunity here maybe to get on the board. Still on his feet and... Caden Hard Yards! Caden Hard Yards, Hardwick! Hardwick definitely the uh, the workhorse on that drive as they kept uh, giving him the ball, giving the ball, giving the ball, and it pays off with six points for the hometown turf. So an opportunity here to knot things up with the pending PAT. Are we going to go for two? And they are going to go for no, two. No, they are going to go for two. Yes, they are. Two receivers to the right, everybody else to the left, center and one quarterback. And it's going to be a pitch oh. and catch, but it incomplete. All right, so no good, but the score now 7-6, to six, Sultan trailing by just one. So, Brian, I was looking at the uh, the schedule tonight and the, the marquee matchup tonight in the North Sound Conference. Cedar Park Christian at four and one, South Whidbey at four and one, taking on each other tonight. Yeah, so that is the, that's the that's marquee matchup. Game. Yeah, it's marquee and matchup. In 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 post in in pre North Sound Conference news, Cascade Conference, old Cascade yes. Conference, Archbishop Murphy is playing Lakewood tonight. Ah, that's it. It's a couple of old rivals from uh, a few years back. The uh, those that follow. Turk Athletics, and you and I, obviously, we've had kids go through this, the school system and so forth. It really has changed a lot from the days of Cedar Crest and Lakewood and <laughs> Archbishop, and those seem, yeah. like a long, those seem like a long time it ago. It just seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah, it really it. does. Uh, you know, Lakewood was the first to leave, and then we had the whole issue with Archbishop that year that they just had a you know, really stacked team, and then 
you know, unfortunately, uh, kids were getting injured, and it was just that. Just seems like a long time ago. Grandma Hardwick's on on the broadcast. She got to see. Hey, she should be proud uh, of her grandson. He's absolutely. doing very well. She's she's proud. Very and well. She's calling him Hard Yards. <laughs> just so you know, the nickname is starting to stick. <laughs> All right. First and ten for the Hawks from the forty-two. So, first time the Hawks. Gained the big, you know, through the air. Turks have to show that they can defend the pass because, again, he was, the receiver was wide open last time. And that's Elijah Dahlman, junior quarterback for Terrace. Oh, that's going to be. Going to be offsides again on. Yeah. And that's going to be against the Turks. That's going to cost them five. It's going to be first and five for the Hawks. Oh, wow. And he's on his feet. Still on his feet. Oh, dragging people down. Over the 25-yard line, down to about the, what, 22, 23? That is number two, Jordan Sims, a 5'11", 190-pounder, junior running back, defensive back for Mount Lake Terrace. And, yes, well, Mr. Sims has done a nice job so far this evening. Jill Forthman is uh, watching the game, and she's, she's representing Gage Williams, a 6'2", 170-pound freshman who gets to – Get to see him play some special teams out there. Mm -hmm. We'll see him out on kickoffs and kickoff returns tonight. Oh, that's going to be a hold. That's going to come back. So, the Battle of the Trenches, Dan. Yes, sir. The Battle of the Trenches. That's, that's you know. where I... Uh, that's, that's where, where I lived. <laughs> that was where. That's where they stuck me. Said, said Balor, you're you're a big kid. Go stick. Go be down there on the offensive defensive line. You know, I didn't play push a whole. I didn't play around. offensive line or defensive <laughs> line till my senior year, and they go, Yeah, we want you to play there. <laughs> but I'm a running back. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. But uh, uh, had okay. a couple good games out there, you know. Glory days. Glory days. Yes. Had a, one game, I had four sacks in the first half. Ooh, there you go. Unfortunately, it was a JV game. <laughs> Back to pass over in the flat to the right. Caught, but dropped almost immediately there. Maybe a maybe a yard or two on that. So, Brian, you know, we talked about kind of the marquee matchup in the North Sound Conference tonight. Then we've got the opposite. We've got two four and one teams playing and two one and four teams playing. Oh yeah. So Kings is playing Granite Falls tonight, and both of those teams are at one and four. So, so we get some real differences. We've got teams that are just very very good, and then we've got some teams that are really struggling. There's just nobody in between. Watch this. Dalman back to pass, throws it deep. Oh, just. Slightly over his outstretched hands. But I think it's after tonight's games, we'll start to see some of the teams kind of break up again. You're going to that first place is going to be going to get a first place team, and you're going to get somebody that's going to move towards the middle of the pack, and and uh, it'll become a little bit more interesting, I think, after tonight. So he got past the defense again. Yes, he did. So he got you, behind it. I mean, you, it, that, that was you, a, a pretty decent throw. You just. Yeah, it's third and 18. Mm -hmm. and, and they're going to throw again here. If I was them, I would, you know, be trying to get 10 to 15 yards here. Yeah, I'd be trying to get 10 to 15 yards, and I would go for it. on. But they, their kicker can actually make it. Yeah, their kicker's the 20, got a good leg. From the 25-yard line, he can kick a field goal from here. Yeah. Yeah, Thompson did a nice job. Lots of time. Dahlman steps. Now he's going to try to run it. Yeah, he's got a spot open, but he's not going to make it. He's going to be short. He's going to be dropped right at the 20. It looks like about the 20-yard line. Good good job, Mr. Wagner. 
So lots of time. Um, Dahlman was back there looking, looking for somebody decided this to is some, tuck I think and run. They're gonna go I think they're going to go for it. I think, I think you would right here. I think it's a little long for a field goal, and you're obviously too close to punt. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, I, I was watching the kicker. Yeah. I was watching the kicker. Yeah, I mean, he, he can make it. He, he definitely make it could make it, I think, but it's just there. I think that they think they've got a good opportunity here to get that first down, and, and they want a touchdown, Brian, versus a field well, goal. Well, I think you just I think you just need to really. Re oh, uh, we got a penalty. Well, since it's a, a procedure. procedure. Now, that might change their mind because that will take them back five, and now they're looking at fourth and ten. I'd still go for it. I would still throw it here. Once well, again, I have to remind you, I'm in the booth, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> yes, there is. And they've told both coaching staffs have, have made us promise that you will stay in the booth. Okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had my year down on the sideline. <laughs> uh, all right. So now we're looking at fourth and just a little over 10, maybe 11. Um, does this change your play? You from no. a fourth and five to a fourth and no. ten. No, it's the same. Same it's, play. It's the same play. You know, you you've shown that you you've shown that you can get past that you can get past them. I, I'm I'm going to do a post right up the middle here. Okay, and he goes deep. That's going to be underthrown though. There. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It was no. it was well underthrown. The receiver was, had to come back for it. I'm surprised. I mean, there was a little bump. There was a little bump, but. I think both players are pretty much going for the ball, and I think they kind of let that one go. It's going to be a turnover on downs anyway for the Turks. And for the Turks, actually, really, you, you would rather not intercept that ball right there because you're going to get better field position well, abso out of this. Well, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, if I was in high school, I'd have intercepted it. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard when you get that ball there. Just say, don't catch it. <laughs> don't All catch right. it because you'll have better field position. Right? <laughs> now, this is where this is where the Turks offense starts, you, you know, the, the last, last time – we, you know, pretty much ran the ball up the middle. Yeah, and I only attempted one pass. And that was on the failed uh, PAT attempt. Well, we have to, we had another pass that only went for a couple of yards. Oh, but, that's right. I do I but, apologize. But you yes. know, you the, this offense is predicated upon run first. One play, one play sets up the next play. All right, back to pass. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, 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 oh. that was that was oh, really he dangerous. Was, <laughs> he missed. He missed. He was wide open over here. He fell down, and that's that's an instance where you just got to take that sack. Don't and throw Lindsay that ball Kendall, up like that. Lindsey Kendall was wide open over here. Yeah. If he had a chance to just zing it out there and you let him run under it. Well, he was under pressure right from the get go. <laughs> I mean, there was just right there that it had somebody blitzing in. It was under pressure. He had three guys on him and and threw it up there, but luckily it didn't land in anybody's. Uh, hands with uh, white jersey and red pants. Oh, and handoff, short game. Hard yards on the, on the carry. And yeah, now we're behind the chains. You need, you want to be like, you know, second and five, not third and seven when you. Uh, somebody in the chat board there making a comparison between you and Al Bundy. Is yeah, that yeah, he, he, he went there. <laughs> yeah, we, we Al Bundy, four, four touchdowns in we, one we game. We love our Billy Kate Cutter from Montana here on TurkPride.tv. You got your Polk High jersey on tonight, Brian? Yeah, Polk High, yeah. <laughs> Polk High. <laughs> All right, back to action. And, oh, well, he had him really high, almost snuck underneath him, but he was able to crawl him and push him. Push Sailor out of bounds. So now we find ourselves just quickly now. The Turks are looking at fourth down. Well, let's see. And, and we've always had, we've had some adventures in punting lately. Yes, adventures in punting. Yeah. Well, that's definitely a punting situation here, deep in their own and, and deep in yeah. their own. Well, we've had adventures in punting. Now, you haven't okay. been here, and we've I, had. No, I haven't. I, I'll take your word for it you, that we've had. I see three personal protectors, so that tells me adventures in punting has been a problem. And you're right. I, I see of what you speak. It, that's what you're referring to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I see now of what you speak. Three, three personal protectors, and we still didn't get the punt off. Yeah. And, you know, in that situation, y y you'd have been better off to just throw the ball away, yeah. you know, yeah, or, or go for it. You know, I, we just hadn't. We just haven't yeah, that, had the. That just wasn't good right from the start. Yeah. 
So, all right. So that gives the ball right back to the Hawks, about where they were before, pretty much. <coughs> First and 10, Mount Lake Terrace. Hand off off the right side. Still on his feet, making some hard yards there. And that's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. Wow, that's scoring. the first quarter's already over. 7-6. Wow. Good in a, in a very competitive first quarter. Like I said, went by fast because a lot of running trucks kept the, on the ball, kept the ball on the ground a lot, so it kept that clock moving. Now well, that's just, you know, that's, that's it's 7-6 to six now, you know. Um, I want to take take a moment and thank all of our sponsors here on TurkBride.tv. And uh, we're getting ready for the second half brought to you by Vicks Burger Shack. Have you ever had a Vicks Burger Shack burger? I day? have, and it was very tasty. Yeah, what it, you know, they're just... They're actually kind of really close to the Windmill Espresso on the east They side. are, just like right across the street. Right across the street. Yeah. So you could get a coffee and a burger, right? All right. So, again, we've got other matchups going on tonight in the North Sound Conference. Uh, Cedar Park Christian is playing against South Whidbey in a ma matchup of two 4-1 and one teams. And then kind of at the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got two 1-4 and four teams with Kings taking on Granite Falls, and then, of course, obviously our hometown Turks well, tonight taking on Mount Lake Terrace. And now we're getting ready next week. We're going to go up to Granite Falls for the Black and Blue Bowl. The Black and Blue Bowl. And, uh, you know, what we'd like to see maybe is uh, a couple of teams coming off victories. If Granite Falls wins tonight and Turks win yeah. tonight, that's a couple of teams with some momentum playing each other and playing for playing for something again. But Black and Blue Bowl, it doesn't, it's, it's always for something, regardless of what this schedules are well you just throw away the records when we play the you just throw out the record book you just yeah. throw out the it's it just it's just it's a rivalry game it doesn't matter both teams could be like oh and ten it doesn't matter we have we do have a score in the granite falls kings game we've got seven nothing granite falls over kings in the second quarter <clears throat> All right, big second and eight. Second and eight. Come second and four. Second and four. And still on his feet, but not quite in. Short of the goal line. I'm sorry, correction in the Granite Falls Kings game. Still first quarter, less than three minutes remaining. Yeah, what's amazing, you guys out there need to know, what's, what's amazing is Dan does this without a producer whispering in his ear. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's what's called a smartphone. You know, you just try to multitask. Yeah. All right, third and one. Roll out at Dahlman. Stops, throws, across his body. No. Juggling and cannot gain control before he goes out of bounds. So now fourth and one. From the three, I think it's pretty obvious, you know, that you're going to go for it Aiden, here. You know, Aiden Fleming on the uh, – Willie Bennett was over there with with Mr. Deason over there to knock that ball out. Very, very good defense. Timeout called by Terrace. Timeout. 11 minutes and 22 seconds remaining. In the score remains Mount Lake Terrace 7. Hometown Turks six, so we can. They're going to go for it, you know. Um, they're going. They're going to go. For, they're going to oh, go wow. for it here. It should be good. <laughs> I mean, it should not be good, you know. Um, All right. So we want to recognize some of our fine sponsors here on TurkPride.tv. You mentioned a couple of them so far: Windmill Espresso, Vicks Burger Shack. Don't forget Rico's Pizza. Rico's Pizza out in our neck of the woods. Turn turn there every night to go home. It's my favorite spot to go on a Sunday night when there's traffic coming down the highway. Yes, and there always is traffic on Sunday night. So, again, we'd like you to visit our fine and patronize our fine sponsors here on TurkPride.tv, your home for all things Southern Athletics. Here I'm hoping that... Caden Hardwick's probably going to come on a blitz here. And he's going to get, get a hard knock. And on defense, we call him Caden Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks and Hard Yards. He's Hard Knocks. On defense, he's Hard he's hard Knocks. Hand off on the left side. Plunging forward. No indication yet. 
first down, though. It looks like he made enough to get the first down. And who was in there on the defense on that? Hardwick. Well, Mark Kilpatrick says it doesn't seem like either team has a kicking game. And I can tell you, I watched the kicker for Mount Lake Terrace in, in uh, – He's got a leg. And he's got a leg, and he was making everything. So I don't know why they're not utilizing him, but at this point in time with the score the way it is, I'm glad. Yeah, I, the only thing, uh, I didn't get here a chance to see him in pregame warm-ups, but the, he, he looked like he had a pretty strong leg in that PAT. I mean, it went well through the goalposts. It was like out to the, uh, out to the parking lot almost. First goal. And just plunges right up the middle. Hawks seem to think, but no indication from the officials. I think we're still a little short. Second down. Second and goal from the one. So Turks bend, but oh, hopefully they got, but don't they, break. They didn't get the touchdown there, but they got the first down. Yes, first down, but no touchdown. So they've got three more cracks at it, basically, from the one-yard line. And that time he is in. All right. Changes it to 13-6, to six, temporarily for the Hawks. PAT upcoming. And now our viewer is going to get a chance to see the... Uh, Kicking leg of number 67. 67? Yes. Oh, if I look on the right side here of the program, that one. Yes, Noah Thompson. No, 6'6", 250-pound kicker. <laughs> he's a big boy. <laughs> yeah, he's a yeah, he's a, yeah. sea bass. <laughs> yeah, Noah Thompson, 6'6", 250-pound offensive defensive lineman is the kicker for the Hawks, and he's a soccer-style kicker. And snap, set, kick, up, and good. 14-6, Mount Lake Terrace. Nine minutes and 55 seconds remaining to go in the second period. So, Brian, what have our friends here on the chat room got going on? Anything exciting over there? Not really. Hey, Brian, you and I were talking about the open. Homecoming, to me, it just seems a little different not to be pay playing a league opponent or a, a rival game for homecoming. This has a little bit diff different feel to it. What, what, what are your thoughts about that? I'm sorry, I missed your... That's I, okay. I just read something on the, the fact, board. The fact that our, the, we're homecoming tonight, but we're not playing a rivalry game where it's not a league game. It just has a little bit of a different feel to it. <laughs> you know, and playing Mount Lake Terrace, the team that we really don't have a lot of history with or, or you know, affiliation with. It just has a little bit of a different feel. It it, it does, in, you know, and I, when you originally yeah. schedule it, you know, you, you hope that... Yeah, no, it is what it is. Everybody wants to have a... You know, they want to have a game where they have a chance to win, obviously. Right. You know, they want to do well for the, for the, for the hometown, hometown fans. And Hence the reason the Huskies schedule like Idaho every year, right? Is there, is but that's not home. Not, that's, that's not, not, that's not me. <laughs> yeah. so no, that's true. Huskies will be in the desert tomorrow night. The, the Huskies not, have had a little bit of an up and down season we're, so far. We're not, we're not talking about that right now. Yeah. I, Brian's got a bitter, bitter side to him right now. Mm. I have a true story I'll share with you here in just a minute about that. The quarterback from the Huskies, Mr. Eason. I'd love to hear it and see here. Oh, fumble. And it's handled there. He, yeah, he kicked it to the end zone. It was in the end zone on that kickoff. Sorry they missed that. Yeah, it was it was caught in the end zone. Um, 
second and 15 coming up. Do you have And short run. Getting back close to the original line of scrimmage. Caden Hardyard, Hardwick on the carry. So you got third and 11 coming up. Who is the kicker? I don't, I don't think I have him listed. I don't have the kicker listed. I'll have to get his name here. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've been, it's been a while since I've seen a kicker be able to kick it in the end zone in high school. Yeah, that, that is pretty impressive. You know, usually if they can get it to the to the 10 or the 15, it's pretty good. And he's stringing the play out. A little bit of. He tried to cut it to the outside, and it didn't quite get him what he was about, looking for. Game of five on that play. So I was telling you, Mr. Eason, we used to, myself, we used to live in Lake Stevens about 10 plus years ago. And at that time, we'll let, let this play go here. Well, it's a big, you know, it's a big fourth down and then, you know, adventures in kicking. I looked, it went away. Hey, we got the punt off. Adventures in punting went okay that time. Yeah. So anyway, I was saying that we were doing, uh, my son was involved in youth football in Lake Stevens, and one of the players, one of the coaches that I was on the coaching staff with was Mr. Easton's father, Tony. And so I saw Mr. Easton, and his actually his older brother, Brian, was the same age as my son, Matthew, and Brian was going to be the star. That, that young Mr. Easton was called Skinny. That was his nickname, was Skinny. And he was... You know, it's, it's, it's just interesting. Turns out that he ends up being the star, and the older brother just didn't didn't quite materialize. But their dad, Tony, came from very good stock. He actually played at Notre Dame, and he was a receiver on the other side when Tim Brown was actually at Notre Dame. True story. Wow. Yes. So. Wow. <clears throat> yep. Mm. And so I had a chance to coach with him for a couple of years. Tony, really great guy, and I wish him and his family all the best. Legal procedure. We've got eight minutes and 13 seconds left to go here in this first half. And what's been an entertaining and pretty competitive first half, too. The Turks had a great drive where they ate up a lot of clock, showed command of the a ground game, moved the ball down, just tried it right down and scored. Um, Malik Terrace so far has well, the, been successful in turnovers the, and it's big plays. Well, the, 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 key, the key for the Turk defense right now is they got to get, uh, you know, pressure up the middle, and they these guys have got to keep the players in front of them and be able to tackle in, in space. Mm -hmm. if, if they don't do it, it's going to be a long day. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got movement uh, once again for the Turks. I think that one's on. And both teams are pointing oh, at each oh, other. It's on. It's on. It's on them. On the Hawks. Even though Chris Ganich got sucked in a little bit on that. Number 52, but he, had, he was drawn off. Pretty good, pretty good uh, homecoming crowd on the on on watching live right now, Dan. We're at 31 viewers right now. There we go. We appreciate you all spending some time here, here with us this evening on Friday night on TurkPride.tv. Your and, home for and all if, things. And if you are here from if you are here from LA Terrace, welcome to the broadcast. We only ask one thing: hit that subscribe button. We already gained one subscriber yeah. during this broadcast, and we're trying to get, we're trying to get to our a thousand subscribers. Thousand, I believe it is, Dave. Sit and, down. And we are at 544. We need to, in order to keep bringing you this content, we need as many subscribers as we can get. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <clears throat> so yes, we do welcome any fans that are joining us from Mount Lake Terrace. I do apologize for my co-host, who at times tends to be a, a little bit of a homer, but that's all right. You know, you're entitled. You're entitled. <clears throat> Isaac Figueroa on the on the broadcast from Orcas Island. Wow, you are really out in the out in the wall. Didn't know we had anybody on Orcas Island anymore. I didn't know that we did either. Well, welcome to the broadcast, Isaac. Now it's interesting. Our viewer, um, Orcas Island. We're going to talk about here a little later in the broadcast about some conference realignment 
And the Turks might be, if something pans out, we might be visiting up there to Orcas Island every, every Orcas other Island. year. Yeah. Yep. So we'll talk about that here a little later on the broadcast as far as some options for realignment, one of which would include the Turks being uh, in a conference with Friday Harbor. <coughs> High snap. Dahlman gets it. Got a fair amount of time. He's scrambling. Rolling, 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 and he's going to step out of bounds. Wow, <laughs> nice job by the Turks. And we got a late flag comes in, but nice nice contained oh, by the Turks. Oh, I don't. Hopefully that's not. Hopefully that's not a unsportsmanlike because that's an automatic first down. Came in from the backside. Could be a hold. No. Yeah, Isaac's been watching the broadcast for, for a while there out on Orcas Island, and he's actually from Orcas Island and has, I believe you have siblings that go to Orcas Island, right, Isaac? There so you go. Perfect. Well, Isaac, welcome. And like I said, we're going to talk about if things break a certain way, uh, you'll get a chance to see the Turks in person up, will be coming your way as opposed to you having to come this way. Yep. But again, we always appreciate you joining us here on TurkPride.tv, your all home right. for and all uh, things Salt Athletics. I, I'm proud to announce that in, in, in the house is Derek Bergman, father to Boston Burks and Briggs. Burke the Turk. There you go. Welcome, Derek. Why do you think? What do you think Nebraska is going to do tomorrow? I got a chance to watch Nebraska earlier this season. Let me put it this way: they're still searching to get back to the glory days of Tom Osborne. Well, Scott it's Frost, not there, it's not there yet. Yeah, well, Scott <laughs> Frost has yet. got the program going in the right direction. They're going in the right direction, They've, but they, they still got a ways to go. That game against Ohio State, State couple, was just, oh, just yeah, yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> it was it, 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 awesome crowd. They were just absolutely pumped up, and Ohio State just took the air out of that crowd just, like, almost instantaneously. It was like, <laughs> Could have heard a pin drop in that stadium after about five minutes. But a great program, great history there in Nebraska, and wish them all the best of getting back to how Second they were in the glory years. Shotgun formation. Dahlman pitches over the – oh, breaks a tackle. They could have had him for a loss there. Still on his feet, changing direction, going the opposite way. Got just a couple of men to beat. Still on his feet past the mid-stripe. And, wow, what a gain for something they could have had him for a loss, Brian. Yeah, got, second and 33, you, th you throw a screen to the right, and you end up giving up a first down. Yeah, you throw a safe little play, and you think, oh, well, this is just – we're going to end up, you know – turning it over and boy breaks it open and Jordan Sims I've uh, been impressed with that young man tonight and his speed and agility yeah. and, and elusiveness. 5 foot 11 190 pound running back junior from Mount Lake Terrace. Yep. Yeah that one hurts. Yeah. That one hurts it, it right hurts, there. It that hurts, one hurts. It hurts when big you, time. When you got him pinned deep and then to let them on what should have been an easy play uh, break that into a large game and get out of a deep hole. First and ten for the Hawks. Handoff on the right side. at Sims again. And he busts out for a gain of about eh, seven, I want to say. Seven or eight. Oh, I take that back. That's number five. Seydou uh, Traore. Traore, I believe it is. Seydou Traore. Derek chiming in as far as the uh, Nebraska, the challenges Nebraska is having this season. Yeah, Derek, like I said, historic uh, pedigree in that university, and like I said, just still kind of trying to get yep. back to the glory and days. We're, and we're back to remember I told you earlier, the Turks have got to get pressure on the quarterback yep. in these situation, and they have to be able to tackle in space. Guess what they didn't do on that last screenplay? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> there you go. Nice control. Aiden Fleming with the takedown. Take oh, down wait, of Sims. wrong sport. Oh, yeah, wrong sport. No, that's that coming. a single leg takedown. Com on coming it. up. That, hold that thought. Hold that thought. We're in football. 
football, Brian. Focus. Focus, Brian. Focus. Focus. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> Uh, I know you're excited, big guy. I, I, I get know excited, you're excited for wrestling. I, get I excited. know you're excited, big guy, but we're, I, we're I doing football. I get excited for wrestling season. Oh. And yes, I'm a homer. Hashtag Turks first. Well, Always. why do you think I apologize to our Montley yeah. Terrace fans in yeah. advance, right? Yeah. All right. Second and 19 from the 47 for the Hawks. And off. Around the right side. Breaks the tackle, but nice. Pursuit. Ty Wagner nice with a nice open field tackle. Nice contained by the Turks, stayed at home and didn't let him get around the edge. Astros all the way, baby. I have to root for uh, the Astros so that I know the Mariners have a shot for doing the, the same way. After, after. After my after my Dodgers just gacked the other night, oh, it's like I lost. I just, just oh, I, I oh, was rooting for the oh, Dodgers like nobody's business. When Kershaw just comes and gives up two home runs, like oh my god, you're killing me here. <laughs> oh, nice pass and caught falling backwards by number 16. That is Dylan Brewer. Nice reception, boy. He was running back backpedaling basically when he caught that ball. Big gain for the yeah, Hawks. You know, with, that should have been, you know, I, that should have been a touchdown. I mean, you're welcome, Isaac. You're welcome. We're glad. We're glad you're here, Isaac. This is like the third or fourth time I've seen you on our on our broadcast, and we, we're glad you're here. We appreciate people coming back. We appreciate our return guests. And again, if you have not subscribed, we really appreciate you doing so. So that's twice, that's twice we've let them off the hook, you know. Yeah, the Turks have played in fits and spurts where they've done well and then they've let a big play happen. And then they play well and then they've let a big play happen or a penalty or, um, and it's just the consistent effort. Putting together s stretches of consistent play has been a challenge tonight for the Turks. That was not a bad pitch that Soto hit that home run off of Kershaw, Derek. That was low, right where it needed to be. You guys are killing me. Quit talking about this. <laughs> it's painful. I it's mean, painful. Sometimes, you sometimes a, the hitter wins. You win 106 games and they get knocked out. It's like, oh, it's just too painful. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, back the, to football. Back, back to football. Sorry, we do have our Turks here in front of us. You know, I'm just a bitter Dodger fan right now. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Turks are in a bet, you know, if, with four minutes to go, down 14 to six. They're and the, Hawk, and the Hawks the are six yard are line, threatening here. Right? They're in know, the red zone. And it's third and third and one. Third and one from the so six, so they can get a first down without getting a touchdown. It's kind of the same situation they were in last time. And they, it looks like they probably will get a first down here, keep them out of the end zone. So the Hawks of Mount Lake Terrace, for those of you that don't know, Mount Lake Terrace is a northern, kind of between Linwood and North Seattle shoreline area, Mount Lake yeah, Terrace. It's good, yeah, if you're it's if closer you, to Linwood. If you know where Briar is. Well, yeah, like you really know where Briar is. Briar is like stuck out, kind of just is wedged in between, you know. But yes, between Woodenville, uh, between Linwood, I should say, and Shoreline is where Mount Lake Terrace is at. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you could go from, you've got, you know, it's kind of in that corner. It's it, it's, it's kind of you know, you got Inglemore and Bothell, and then you keep going west, and then you run into Mount Lake Terrace. It's kind of just, yeah, east of I-5, basically. They're just south of Linwood. But we do want to welcome, again, homecoming 2019. We want to welcome all of our uh, former alums that have joined us here, either in person at Salton High School or on the broadcast here tonight. Big we hope you're enjoying yourself. It's third and one again, huh? I don't understand and he's in. Yeah. 
That's Jordan Sims. Jordan Sims. We're learning that. that yeah, we don't even need, need to look at our roster anymore. We know who number two is, Jordan Sims, for the Hawks. So the Hawks extend their lead now to 20-6 to six with the PAT upcoming. And I have a feeling we'll see Mr. number 67, Mr. Thompson, out there again, who's done a nice job in uh, kicking the kicking duties for the Hawks thus far. Yeah, you know, you could go from, you, you, you just, uh, you go from the, if you're in, if you're in Edmonds, you go the other side of the, of I-5 on the east, just Pretty on much, the east, yeah. east side of I-5. It's east, Edmonds. yeah. Mount Lake Terrace is east of I-5 and south of Linwood. Very much a, just a kind of a bedroom community, you know, they're not a lot, it's just a lot of homes and stuff in there. Anyway. And hey, we got a special treat coming for everybody up here at halftime here in the next two and Two minutes, 45 seconds. And what, what would that the be? The Sultan Turk Marching Band is going to be taking the field, and you and I are going to just stop talking. Now, that's a double win because <laughs> they get to hear the band, and they don't have to listen to us. That's a that's what's called a win-win. <laughs> yes, the Sultan, the award-winning, world-famous Sultan High School Marching Band under the direction of Ms. Jill, Jill Sumter will be entertaining you at halftime coming up. And I think we've got the Royal Court also, too. They'll Royal be announcing Court? the Royal Court. You bet. Our PA announcer, Andrea Fuller, sitting to my left, will be taking care of the duties of recognizing the uh, royalty for Homecoming 2019. All right, two minutes and 36 seconds on the clock. Ryan, you got it. I think the Turks just have to get something on the board here before halftime. Something, uh, just one more score on the board before halftime. Really don't want to go in down, you know, uh, 21 I, to 6. I just, I just don't think we've had time to let anything develop in the passing game. Uh, no. All right, we've got an update from the game between Granite Falls and Kings. Uh, end of the first, well, they're in the second quarter now. 14-0, uh, Granite Falls over Kings. And unfortunately, we do not have a field reporter for the marquee game, which is South Whidbey and Cedar Park. Got like a, looks like a rugby scrum out there going on, pushing, shoving. It's a good, good effort there. Yeah, he's still on his feet and dropped. Well, I I think he uh, fake the reverse and let and let uh, Mr. Bennett keep it on her. Uh, on a naked boot around the left side here. I think, you know, you just try something. you got a minute and a half left here in the first half. And other than the, the one drive that they had, they've had difficulty, you know, moving the ball consistently. So, yeah, you got to try to shake it up here a little bit. Good night, Isaac. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Murphy is actually playing in the West Coast League now, and they are... Uh, as good as ever, uh, they're playing Lakewood tonight, up in Lakewood. Like I said, hearkening back to the old uh, Cascade Conference of Absolutely. years gone by, right? Both were opponents of the Turks, not not that many years ago. All right, we got a minute twelve. It's third and fourteen. Turks are going to take a timeout here. Well, actually, it should be fourth. Fourth and 14. Fourth and 14. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. Thank Time you. out by the Hawks. As much as I love fake punts, this is not the uh, place yeah, to do it. Yeah, no. I, I, you just don't want to do something stupid here and go down, you know, 28, you know, 28 to 6 at halftime. I mean, this game is still within reach. 
but to do something silly here and give up a, a, a quick six points uh, to the Hawks. So again, there is a minute and 12 seconds still remaining, so there and is some time. Well, and he's going to have to kick it from his end zone. And he's, he got about 30 yards on the last on the last punt that he did. Um, we also have another punter in Michael Moss, but like I said, you know, not not Michael Moss's fault, but we have had adventures in the snaps this year. Adventures in punting. Yes, adventures in, in punting coming right up. Yeah, adventures in punting at, at this juncture in this particular location would not be good. That's, this is That would be b a bad thing, given that the punter is actually standing within his own end zone. Now, just, just to say, Caden has a good arm. He has a good arm. He, he has a really good arm. The offsides against. Well, that gives him a little bit of breathing room. You know, and Caden's got a good arm, but you have to execute it, and the guy has, to, you know, you have to catch it. And, and uh, we had a game earlier this year where they did three. There we go. Got, got it snapped cleanly. Got the punt away. That's, that is That's good right gonna, there. Oh, he chose to field it. Sims, I think, could see that the ball was going to continue to roll further down the well, field. Well, that was so a good that was a good choice his on ball. his ball. He it was. He should it, have probably called for the, you know, for the fair catch there. But um, well, I think he saw right in the way that the ball was going, it was going to hit, and it would probably go another 10, 15 yards down the field. And so he made a, made the wise play to to stop right. that, but he got he, so uh, he got Mark, hit Mark Kilpatrick hardcore. noted that that was uh, too many players on the field on the last penalty against the Hawk. And if I'm them, I'm going for the end zone here. I, I'm I'm going back. I'm going back to You're pass. You're going to take four four cracks out of here. They got a minute to go on the clock. And a quarterback under center. And he rolls, stops, throws across his body, and complete down to about the 42-yard line. It's going to be a first down for the Hawks. And the clock stops, you know, to move the chains. Yep, and they'll hustle up. Now, I believe the Hawks have used two of their three timeouts. <coughs> clock running, 45 seconds remaining. A little bit of miscommunication out there as far as the formation. Dahlman comes under center. Hands off to the left side to Sims. And he dances forward for 28 about 28 seconds left to go, and I think their kicker could make it from there. But you know, now they're calling a play at the line of scrimmage. So Dahlman gets them lined up quickly, and they're just going to spike the ball. Uh, okay, maybe so they didn't have any timeouts left. Yeah, 15 seconds. Now's where I think they'll take a couple of cracks at the end zone, Brian. Take a couple of cracks well, here. Well, with 15 seconds left to go, you have a chance, you know, to go once. At least once, maybe twice, depending on what kind of route you run. All right. 15 seconds remaining. Dahlman brings his team up. Yeah, drops back to pass. Lots of time. Throwing it deep over the middle. Lots of people there, and it is intercepted. Ty Wagner with the interception. All right, nice play by Wagner. That will, uh, is going to do it here. Six seconds on the clock, but that effectively is going to bring us to halftime here. Ty so Ball Hawk Wagner on the interception. That's what we needed. We needed a, needed a play, needed a stop, and that's what they came up with. Good coverage by the Turks. You can see a whole host of people. Thought the receiver, thought the Hawk receiver actually had it because he had the best chance at it. He had it, it was turned and facing the quarterback and leaped up, but uh, the Turks hung with it, got well, the interception. Ty, Ty was Ty, who you know Ty is not. He's a sophomore. He is a five foot seven, hundred and thirty seven pound sophomore. It's the sophomore. And you know, and he was a whole lot less than that last year. Uh huh. Starting as a freshman. And another penalty, delay of game. 
Yeah, delay a game on the Turks this time. This time you just take a knee and get out of there. Yeah, I think we just <laughs> we get the ball. Let's let's not like get sacked and have a fumble and have them pick it up and run in the end zone. Just you know, maybe run a play here, I guess. And complete in one second still. They were trying one to tick. run a halfback pass on that. One tick on the clock. Yeah, you just got to just take a knee here and yeah. live, live, just. Regroup, come back out, take a break, come back out. Because, again, this, this game is still very much winnable. It's very much and a winnable you know, game. Hey, we've got all kinds of neat stuff coming for you on halftime. Uh, we've got our Turk, Sultan Turk marching band out there to, you know, at halftime. We've got the the uh, ho homecoming court coming up, and uh, just all kinds of great stuff. And they don't have to listen to us. Yeah, and they, and, you know, and that's a, the bonus is <laughs> that's they don't the bonus. <laughs> you don't have to listen to Brian and Dan drone on. Oh, all right, and that will do it. Take us to halftime with the score: the hometown Turk six, the visiting Mount Lake Terrace Hawks twenty-one. All right. Again, so, enjoy the festivities. Yeah, and, and I only got one thing to say was we go into halftime. Hashtag Turk first. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with you. Enjoy the homecoming royalty and the performance by the award-winning Sultan High School Marching Band under the direction of Ms. Jill Sumter.
All right, we are back. Hope you enjoyed <coughs> the halftime festivities there. Performance performance by the Sultan High School Marching Band from selections from Panic and Fifth Disco and uh, as well as announcement of our 2019 Homecoming Royalty. Brian, you're back? I'm back. You're back. I told uh, Ms. Fuller, our PA announcer, who did the announcements for the young people. I'm dating myself a little bit. You know, back in my day, the, the girls all had the formal gowns when they walked out. Much, much more casual these days. Much more casual. Well, it's even the dances. Not saying that that's, not saying that's bad or good. good. It's just different. Yeah, you know, even so. the dances are different. Even the last 10 years, things, you know, things have changed. Yep. Yeah. Well, I know. But I'm not saying that's a bad thing. No, it's just different. It's just, it's just different. It's just, it's just different. There's different times. You know, homecoming, I mean, this dates back to the 40s and the 50s. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, I don't know what they do in other countries. Maybe somebody here knows that. Uh, but, you know, and I don't know how high school works in other countries and what, you know, what do they do. No. They don't have football. No. Homing, homecoming dance tomorrow night. So sure. we'll hope the kids have a great time, safe, be safe, and have fun, and do all that sort of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I know is back in my day, we used to have a lot of uh, dances on Friday night after the game. You used to have like an after the game dance on a Friday night also, yes. too. Yes, yes. You awesome. know, like a little two-hour, you know, that type was a, of thing. That was always a fun thing. You, you Started right game. after the game and start like at 9 o'clock, go from like 9 to 11 or something like that, you know. Yep. We'd always go, you know, that was my that was my Friday night thing, you know. We yeah. If we didn't have a home game, and I, you know, if we didn't have a game that week, I was always at another high school well, sneaking into their dance. We did, yeah. Well, you didn't have phones, you didn't have the internet, you didn't have 500 channels on your television, you know, and all these other things to do. I mean, what did you do? You hung out with your friends. Didn't, and have, you didn't have an Xbox. Didn't yeah, have a you PlayStation. Just hung out with your friends, I and mean, that was all there was to do. Really, it was spend time with your friends. And we drank out of the water hose. Yeah, spend time with your friends. And for, the, for our young viewers, that means actually face-to-face -face seeing someone and talking to them back and forth, not texting them, not, you know, uh, FaceTiming them and stuff like that, but actual physical face-to-face -face interaction, something I think some, sometimes we get gets lost these days. But anyway, I digress. So Turks are going to get the ball to start the second half. we got a windmill espresso coming up. But, hey, do you ever have problems with your computer? I have had in the past, but knock on wood, not recently. Well, you know, PC 911 Search and Rescue with Bob Beeman is who Dave, Dave Moon recommends. And Dave Moon is like the IT director for the district. So Absolutely. if Dave recommends him, you must be very good at what yeah, he does. Yeah, and he, he's here in the Sky Valley, and he'll come to your house, or he'll do it remotely wherever you are in, in the nation. That is extremely frustrating. I mean, I've had computer problems. It is so frustrating. Oh, yeah. Yeah, jeez. You're I, just like, I, oh, I've my had, gosh. I've had a computer hijacked uh -huh. by ransomware. Oh, boy. Like, Pay me money and I'll go away. Yeah. I actually pulled the hard drive out and started over. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather buy a new hard drive and a new operating system than to give you money. Did you... Uh, was was that the uh, was that the the, the person in uh, that said you were related to an African prince that said you had probably inherited millions that of dollars? Was another kickoff, <laughs> and that's going to go into the end zone again. No, mm, oh, nope, you got it. Ty's going to take it out. So on his feet. Ooh, oh, wow, nice got, hit. He got windmill. Speak of windmill espresso, they got windmill there as he got tackled. All right. So first and 10 from their own 18-yard line. Turks get the ball here to start the second half. Wind has picked up. Uh, I noticed it, not, you, you and I, we went out at halftime, and the wind is, is picked up. Yeah, it's uh, it's going from east to west here. Mm -hmm. Temperature is dropping. Wind is picking up a little bit, so we'll have to see if that affects things here uh, for well, the remainder of the night. Beautiful day at the Sky Valley today. Ah, uh, street football, Billy Cutter. Street football, I remember. Yeah, that's good stuff. Kane at hard yards, Hardwick, with a good almost 13 or 14 yards. Still on his feet. Man, I got to take him down. It took half the team to get him off his feet. <laughs> it's sticking. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, nice crowd here tonight. 
at uh, yeah. Salton High School here on what is a lovely evening. Like I said, a little breezy out there, but only about it's still about 50 degrees, so it's actually not that cold. But uh, the breeze does make it feel colder than that. Yeah, the, yeah, the wind chill is definitely making it feel like it's colder than 50 degrees. Hard yards again. Uh, on his feet. Nice run. <coughs> so Hardwick kind of getting back to that one drive that they had early on in the game where he was able to move the ball consistently. Well, that's just the way to go. And then now they're going to start keying on him. And then when they key on him, you're going to see you're going to see him, the Turks do something different off of that play. That's right. But I'd gi I'd give it a, to him again. Yep. And he is running over that left side. He's got. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's very reminiscent of that. He's drive got they Cody had. Deason over there at left tackle, who is just making huge holes for him. There he goes. Breaks it open. He's going. Oh, oh. one to beat, and he just couldn't quite get there. That nice run. He's like, oh, man, I had it. I had it. Kaden, hard yards. Getting the hard yards. Yes. Nice run by that young man. Just keeps pounding and pounding and pounding away. That was over the right side. That started on the right. So they've been running to the left, and they just took him to the right. And you know what? Give him the ball again. Make him stop him. Once he can break through that initial line, you know, he's got enough speed that he's able to outrun those linebackers, and he turned that into some nice yards. Secondary caught him there just right at the end. Otherwise, he'd been in for six. Well, they're running a three. Looks like a three, four. They're going to run blitz on this one. Now that was coming. On the right side. Breaks a tackle. Still on his feet. And dropped. Remember now, remember now I, I mentioned to you they were going to keep keep giving it to him and then they were yep. going to run run the next evolution of that play on there. So first and ten. Tanner Belcher on the broadcast. Welcome. TB. I remember Tanner Belcher in a cloud of dust. Yes. We lost some, we lost some viewers at halftime, but the uh -oh. Turks are on the 15-yard line. They are. They're, they left at the wrong time. Turks are threatening. First and 10 on the 14 for the boys in blue. Hand off to Hardwick. Caden Hardyards. Yeah, he's still on his feet. Nice run by Hardwick. I want to give a shout out to some of our first responders tonight. My daughter, who happens to be a first responder, is listening to us on the broadcast. So, huh. Katie, we appreciate you tuning in, spending some time. She's Katie, Katie, the beauty queen and cheerleader. Uh, yes, well, yes, yes, from absolutely. a few years ago. That is correct. Yep, she's varsity cheerleader for her whole time here at Salt Lake. Kate Hard Yards. Oh, up the nice middle. run. Good for a first down, at least. It's a first down. Oh. There we go. That's what we like to see. It's not student body left. It's student body right. It's Caden Hard Yards up yep. the middle. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty obvious, you know, until they're able to stop it. They're just going to keep getting more and more of the same. But now they have five or six guys at the, at the, at the line now. They're really going to key on this. Yeah, I would think the I Hawks think Zorns is probably going to get this going around the left side here. Ooh, they read that one well. Sailor. Yeah, they read that yeah, one well. I called him Zorns, didn't I? That's a couple years ago. You did, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I think they knew what that play was before it happened. Yeah, they sniffed, sniffed that one out pretty good. There was a whole host of Hawks there to uh, stack up Mr. S Sailor. Well, but there is a flag on the ground. Or, that, or is that the football? It's the football. Shows you how what old age does to me. Yeah, I know. But I didn't know what play they were going to run. I guess if I knew what play they were going to run, that the other team did too. Up the middle, buddy. Oh. Aiden Fleming. Touchdown. Touchdown, Touchdown Turks. 
All right, making it 21-12. Aiden so, Ironman Fleming. So the Turks are right back in this thing. Yep, now we're going to kick the extra point. Don't go for two. I remember in high school when you kicked, or well, not in high school, in junior football, when you kicked it, it was two points. Yes, I do remember that. Oh. Because kicking was actually harder than running the ball in. No. Yeah. And adventures in kicking there again. Adventures in kicking. Was that back when they wore leather helmets, back when you played ball, Brian? Leather oh. helmets and no face cards? <laughs> <laughs> now, Brian, you have to be my witness. Uh, this Maybe this text message came my daughter sent me, this says no shout out. It's like I gave her a shout out. I gave a, a shout out to all our first I responders, including, let's go this one more time, including my daughter, yeah. Caitlin. Well, I thought I gave I her a shout out. I love you, and we appreciate all that you her, do to protect our community. I thought I gave her a shout out, too. I thought you, did, you mentioned that she was a varsity cheerleader, or she was a beauty queen, all these things. So yeah. I'm hopeful that that message, text message, came before, before we said all those things. Well, that's too bad. We really needed that one point to make it an eight-point game there. Now it's nine point. Yep. And the so way that, the way Mount Lake Terrace has been moving the ball on us. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, we got a lot of time left. Eight minutes, ten seconds remaining in the third. So, But this drive, I think, will be maybe to build on that, Brian. This drive will be important to see how they come well, out here in the second half. Well, you, you've got you, – you're behind by two, two scores still. Mm -hmm. And – we haven't shown that we've been able to kick the ball recently, and that kicking is, has know, been a challenge. Yes, and, and and I don't put that on the you know, it's not on the punter or the kicker as much. Ty Wagner's in there somewhere. Still on its feet, Sims boy Sims got him by the, the by the shoelaces there, and it's a good thing he did, or he might have been on for six. So Brian, I mentioned earlier we wanted to touch base on next year. The Turks are going to be changing their league affiliation again. Um, and it's out of necessity. It's just that the number of teams um, in the North Sound Conference is just such that it's not really a viable group. <laughs> and so they were presented us with a couple of options. Mr. Sifferman presented us with a survey with a couple of options of what people would like to see. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Sims. Oh, oh no, not that. Nice it's not Sims, hit. sorry. Sailor, come sail away, come sail uh, away. Trey Ori tackled by Sailor. <laughs> Derek Bargman blasted the pass with Omar Rocket Leg Valera. <laughs> yes. Well, Michael Moss has been working hard on his kicking, and uh, you know, if you've got to have a good snap, you've got to have a good hold. And just a lot of stuff has to happen, right? And <clears throat> yeah. Hand off to number five, Traore. So we talked about the Turks are going to need to change affiliation. So there's an option of either going south or going north, right? Yep. And basically, to simplify it, that's about as simple as we can make it. And there's pluses and minuses to both. And so we'll, we'll talk about what those pluses and minuses are. And, and Brian and I were actually in agreement. On this, one. believe it or not, Brian and I agreed <laughs> on something. Jeez. <laughs> uh, so, if they went south, Brian, it's it's the Emerald City Conference. Is that yep, correct? That, that is correct. That currently exists uh, is made up primarily of private schools. Yes. Uh, from the North Seattle, North Seattle area, and some from Bellevue, Woodenville. East area. side, yeah, east, east side, and and Seattle, uh, but predominantly small uh, private schools, uh, faith-based schools for the most part, and. Um, so that would be the South affiliation. Next play coming up. Break the tackle. Nice, nice. Sailor. Sailor. By Just the way. Yes. My clubhouse leader for TurkPride.tv player of the game right now. Is that's right. Caden Hardwick. Uh, I, yeah, I would say that's. So the other option then, Brian, is to go north. And when we go north, then we get a much different dynamic. We're talking smaller towns, some smaller schools. So you've got the Darringtons and the Friday Harbors and the LaConners and, and, and the Orcas Island. And and the Orca, yeah, and all those sorts of folks. we got some uh, a couple of private schools. Uh, Mount Vernon, I believe there's a, a Christian 
high school that's in Mount Vernon that would be in that group and so forth. And off to Sims, number two. Nice tackle on the side by Ty Wagner. So that's basically the options. We go south and we play with the more metropolitan private schools, predominantly private schools, or we go north, which more travel, uh, especially right. if you're going to go every other year to Friday Harbor on Orcas Island, which is a lengthy ferry trip and so forth. So those are the two options we'll talk about here in a little bit more just about this next play. And we'll talk about the pros and cons of both of them. Yep. Grandma Hardwick wants us to go north. <laughs> it's on his feet. Austin Wiedemann doesn't like, doesn't like it either. Yeah. So let's continue this, Brian. So south, let's talk about the pros. What are, what are the, the positives of going south and, and integrating with the Emerald City Conference? Um, com competitive balance. Mm -hmm. on the sports that they do have. Correct. I think travel, shorter tra travel distances so would be less. More con more traffic congestion is a con. More congestion, but less miles. And right. No, not necessarily time, but mileage would be less. So that's a pro. Let's have another play here, and we'll talk a little bit further about this. Oh. Had him stalked behind the line of scrimmage, and he was able to squeeze out. So let's talk about some. What are some negatives of going south? Well, they don't have all the same sports. So usually they don't have football, wrestling. Sometimes res can be a problematic. Wrestling, and then you look at you look at soccer, and soccer for them, boys and girls is played in the fall. Correct. So you got a season issue. Of when yeah. You, you when know. in the year it's played. So uh, the the boys soccer would have to play with the Watcom Watcom League. The girls right. would be able to stay there but the boys would not. Okay. All right, back to action here. Hand off. That Sims again. And, and you know, you're, you're not playing, you know, this, the football would be more of an open schedule up here because those, those schools, Don't you know, have. Seattle, you know, Seattle, Seattle Academy doesn't have a football team. Correct. They, they do have a wrestling. They do have a wrestling program. Right. I just started. So that's recently. that is, uh, you know, is can be problematic because you're gonna have some scheduling challenges. You're gonna have some different leagues that you're gonna compete in for different sports and so forth. So it's gonna be a little bit more dis would be a little more disjointed from that standpoint. But I think you're right. Competitive balance. Um, the Turks would match up well with some of those. Some of nice those play sports. over on the side. Way to turn it up. So let's let's talk north. So north, what's the pros of going north? Well, you, you it's more like us. Uh, you, you've got the Darringtons and the Granite Falls, the and Laconers. the Laconers, and the Coopvilles, and, and the, the Friday Harbor, Friday Harbor, Orcas Island, and, the, and those different schools. The Coopvilles, the yeah, the those Concretes, yeah, and those, the, and in most of those schools have wrestling programs. Most of them have football programs. Mm -hmm. um, you, when you talk about competitive balance, the one thing is, you know, is, is of course, the travel, you know. And, uh, oh, no, I did it off. again. So, yeah, I think you're, you're right, is that you're going south, much more urban. Uh, going north is going to be a lot more rural, small towns, um, and so forth. More miles as far as travel, but not maybe not necessarily more time as far as the or number of hours away from school on the road unless you're talking about the friday harbor i mean that that is a pretty a pretty onerous trip to get clear up there with the the ferry travel and so forth um but so okay so plus and minus so how did you vote i went i went north and i too went north yeah. I, I i think that So what was the what was the number one deciding factor and why you wanted to go north? If you had to pick one thing, what would what would it be? Well, I like schools that have wrestling programs. <laughs> well, you're honest, at least. <laughs> you would get more of that. For for me, it's nothing more, and I'm not sure how I can encapsulate this. Friday night football. It, it, the difference between a, a, a town that is the city's, the town's football team versus a private school where it's just essentially the parents of the kids that are on the field. It's just a completely well, different field. It's a completely yeah. different field. Now, let's talk about basketball for a moment. You, you know, my favorite gym in the whole. Touchdown. Oh. Sims, number two for the Hawks, in to score. 
Sorry, I interrupted the That's all right. Game. Let's yeah, let's stay let's stay with this action here for just a minute. After the false start. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Fuller said after the false start they scored the touchdown. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately I don't see I don't see a Yarrell handkerchief out there to acknowledge that, unfortunately. Um, extra point coming up for the Hawks. Yeah. Yep. And the point is good. So 28-12 Hawks. So, yeah, Coach Reilly here down um, to the left of me made a couple other good comments, you know, as far as the, just the general facilities, the size of the facilities and so forth in the private schools obviously is smaller. Because, um, well, again, a lot of times they're not you, – you come to a, a private school event – I mean, literally, it is the student, the student body, and the parents of the kids that are playing. Yes. A lot of times, is who is there, it, because there's right. no, they're not affiliated with a town. They're not affiliated well, with a. I just love a, the culture. A, a I love, I love the culture and the tradition of the smaller I, towns. I do too. Uh, the Darrington Gym is one of my favorite gyms yeah, in the state. The Mount really Vernon's cool. Gym is one of my favorite gyms in the state. Yep. Uh, it's just, it's just the whole. Even whether it's wrestling or whether it's uh, football. Uh, well, not football. Whether it's wrestling or basketball, it just it just fits. It just fits more with what a logging town of Sultan, a logging traditional town of Sultan would would be go going Kick to off do. Kickoff is kicked deep and fielded uh, just outside the goal line, still on his feet and dropped at the twenty. So you're, you're right. For me, it, it really came down to because I think there's a lot of similarities. I think competitive balance, like you said. You're going to have some smaller teams up north, so there is, you know, going to be there's going to be some competitive balance issues. Um, but I, to me, it just came down to Friday night football, high school football, is just a, to me has always intrinsically been a community-based event. And again, nothing against the private schools, but in a private school, it's not a community. It is a group of people whose kids yeah, attend and, that and institution. Spring, spring sports becomes when you go with, you know softball and baseball and track and field spring sports becomes a bit of a bit of a trial because right. you have to be there you know by three o'clock right. so you're out of school at least half the day hand off to hardwick Caden hardyard first down green close to a first down yeah it just depends on the spot there i think he's gonna be just a little shot but a gain of over nine gonna be uh second short um yeah i think you're yeah, to me, Brian, I think we're, we're saying some of the same things. So just the attraction of it keeping it in a small community, uh, the the more comparable sports matchups and so forth. But, you know, again, there's going to be some drawbacks. There's going to be some drawbacks. I don't. I think it, the, it, to me it just rings the fact there's no perfect solution. There's no perfect spot. Because to get other to get other schools, really, uh, Sultan is kind of located geographically around a lot of larger communities, and um, for us to really fit well, you know, you really need to be up way north with the the Mount Bakers and the Meridians and the Nooksack Valleys. But those are way way north, um, and I think you were saying that we had been affiliated with some of those schools in years, many years gone by, in the past. Um, to me, ideally, that would be the best place for us, but I think travel would definitely be very prohibitive, especially when you get into, like, basketball on a Wednesday night, kids getting home at after midnight on a school night just isn't, isn't very palatable. So, Nice pass over the, the wing. Wagner. And the reception. caught and oh, dropped immediately. Oh, that's Fleming. I got my, got my players mixed up. That's not the first time or last time that's going to happen. So it'd be, we'll, we'll just have to see. We'll see what happens. You know, like I said, uh, or send well, a survey monkey around. So, people so just, I mean, I realize, you know, it's a new, it's a new, you know, two-year thing that we've got set up. Right. What, what's, what is driving the change? I think it's, it's just, yeah, Coop Bill leaving. Yeah, Kings wants to leave it because you're down to three teams basically. You're down to Sultan, South Whidbey, and Granite Falls, and you can't have a three-team league. No. Then so that, that you, makes you just you, you got to do something. Do you think Kings would then join the Emerald City League? Probably, yes. 
Now, Kings, you know, Kings, they're an interesting study because it wasn't that long ago. Kings was a perennial football powerhouse that was competing for state titles. And now you're looking at a team that's at one and four playing against Granite Falls tonight. So that program has really fallen on some hard times. Much, much uh, very different than what it was, let's say, four or five years ago. Same coach. <laughs> Been yeah, the same coach for 20 plus years. Yep. So it is, it is interesting. Gee, I wonder what play they're going to run. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's not going to get the first down on that. Let's, um, he's going to gain a half a yard. No, go for it. <laughs> quarterbacks oh, just go quarterback for it. sneak up the middle. That's what you do here. Coach Brian says, and we're right. through three. 34 nothing granted, huh? And we're through three, so we've got a big. And to get you a, an update on a score, one score that we do have access to, again, uh, Kings that we just talked about is taking on Granite Falls High School. Both teams uh, struggling a bit at one and four, and so far, got Granite Falls leading 14 to nothing over King. So uh, Granite Falls will be the opponent next week. Black and Blue Bowl. Black and Blue Bowl coming next up week, next week. Up at, at Granite Falls this year. So the Turks will have to make that short trip up the hill and just east of us here to, well, actually about, about due north as the crow flies, to Granite Falls uh, for that game against uh, the Tigers. Well, I'd really love to see Bennett start running running the ball a little more, but I, I know they don't want him to run more. <coughs> so again, we will keep you apprised as the decision comes down on the realignment, division realignment for the Turks. So, the, for next so year. It, we don't want to make a realignment. It's just basically for the enforced. We are, yeah, we can't stay where we're at, basically. It's just not a viable, three teams is not a viable league. I mean, you play each other twice and then you try to find some, you know, some non-league contest it's just not very just not very not a good situation so it's because of that that again we're looking at other options and there just really isn't a, a, an ideal option uh there are drawbacks to do to both options well i think derek's asking me if we would play granite next year i think wherever we go granite granite going will follow i think granite uh, granite and sultner whether we want to be or not we're hooked at the hip and I and I think you know, Derek, if if they if the Turks went south, here's a big put fourth and one coming up. Hard yards. There you go. Good for the first down. And I think I, I'd be pretty safe to say that even if for some strange reason that the two teams got separated as far as their league affiliations, there'd be a non-league contest that definitely would uh, would happen in there as far as a. Uh, match up each year to maintain that rivalry. All right. I wonder who's going to get the ball here. And off. Fleming. Fleming, number three. Ooh, hit. Good for, good for two. Yep. He then hits hit. that hole so quickly. He does. And then he got hit by a defensive lineman for the Hawks and dropped after a short gain of two. It's going to bring up second and eight. Hunter Jones into the game for the Turks. All right. So we're going to be back in two weeks. Two weeks? Against Kings. Kings is coming. Yeah, the Kings Knights are coming. Look a lot like this. They're white and red, too. They look a lot like the team from Malik Terrace is out there tonight. Same colors, scarlet and white and silver. Rolling to his right, stops, throws, out of bounds. Oh, you've got to throw that flag there. Oh, no flag. Of course, it was uncatchable. Is that a hashtag Turks first moment there, Brian? Yeah, okay. of course. Okay. Okay. Austin, <laughs> yeah, if, if, you're watching, if you're watching the chat room, Austin, Austin Wiedemann, who graduated recently yes. from Sultan, a good basketball player. I loved watching him play. He's, uh, he's being pretty... Uh, pretty aggressive with his with yeah his no i agree i agree and, with and i agree with everything he's saying so yeah it's, they're uh, they're right there it's geographically right in their in their backyard and it you know again other than because 
football, their program really has fallen on some hard times. Basketball, they still have a, an excellent program. Um, and they've only been playing baseball for just a, a, maybe five years. Um, they started their program, I know, when my son Matthew was in high school, and so that was has been within the past five years they've been playing baseball. So. Oh, pass on the flat, but just beyond past uh, Fleming's outstretched arms. Well, you, now's when you throw that halfback pass. You are correct, Derek. Hashtag Turks first. <laughs> Brian makes no apologies for Don't. himself. None. No. <laughs> I'm a homer. Don't. <laughs> You're the king, homer. <laughs> See, that's my job is just to keep you in line. That's why I'm here. I'm, I'm well, you haven't been here, so I, I've, I've had the. I've had the. I know you've just been. You've run amok. You run. He's run amok. Rolling to his left. Stop. Oh, he's hit and dropped. Tackle by number fifty-one for the Hawks. Yeah, Dylan John. He's a five-eleven senior. 185 pounds, and he got to put a good hit on the Turks QB. Well, and you know, I've always been a, I've always been a proponent of the public and private schools having separate leagues. Mm -hmm. And I know and there's been discussions. That's not a new. That's not yeah, a new yeah, topic. Yeah, it's know, a, and I think, uh, you know. Oh, thank thank you, Austin. Doing your basketball games was always one of my favorite things to do. Oh, here we go. Adventures in punting again. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <clears throat> you know, you're better off it, it, just throw the ball away. You know, but like I said, adventures in punting. Yeah, adventures in punting. <laughs> <laughs> After tonight's game, Brian, I fully understand what you mean by that term now. I okay. fully understand. When you first said that, I said, what are you talking about? You know, our, what are the, you talking the first about? game I did, we, we did three fake punts in a row, and I couldn't figure out what we were doing. And it worked like two out of the three. And then I figured out why we were doing it. Because we have a hard time punting. And and like I said, it's not, it's just the it, it, the execution just just, yeah. just is not happening. Well, that long snapping is, you know, it does take some talent to long snap that ball. And if you just don't have somebody on your squad that can do that consistently, it, it certainly can give you a, a hard time. And the Turks are, are definitely seeing that. Oh, they were doing the Wildcat there. Sims, yep. He's got it on the Wildcat formation. That's a touchdown. So muffed punt turns into one play, touchdown for the Hawks, and it goes down to 34-12, Mount Lake Terrace. So now, you know, talk about, you know, a little bit about the league affiliation with basketball. You can, you can do... You know, Friday night doubleheaders and mm -hmm. things like, you know, b boys and girls. Which they've been doing that format for a few years and, now. And I, you know, I think that you, you know, you save the week, the week, f you know, for league league games you do on Friday nights. You, you can save on some of the travel. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you invite, invite those Emerald City League teams in on the Tuesday night or the Wednesday night. And, and you do those close by and you're not having to travel as much. Well, those, and the Turks have done that as far as for basketball. They have utilized... A lot of those filled a lot of those, you know, those non-league games in with Emerald City League teams because again they're relatively close. There is a, a, a fairly good competitive balance, and so forth. Well, at Extra thirty-five, at, 30, at 35, thirty-five to 12. twelve, it's yeah, it's the last time we're going to mention the score for the rest of the game. Well, Mount Lake Terrace again. Keep in mind is a two A school, yeah. obviously much bigger school. Again, I don't know what their enrollment is, but definitely. Well, they're more urban they're school, barely, bigger school. They're they're bare they're barely two A. Uh huh. Um, you know they their student base is you know if you look down there they're bigger. They Probably eight hundred students, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, good school, good school. I mean, uh, back in the day, that's where all you know when I went to Bothell, that was where all the all the pretty girls went to school. Um, <laughs> I, I've been known to go to a few homecomings and proms and things like that at Mount Lake Terrace over the years. I do not even I, I can't say that I know where Mount Lake Terrace High School is even at. Oh, no, I could honest. drive you right. I could drive right there really? right now if I needed to. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Well, we're not going to go there right now. But, but like anyway. I said, you I, could. I, I had a few you, you a could. few girls that I dated that went there. And, uh, and, and oh, wow. 
out the back of the end zone for a touchback. <coughs> All right, 10 minutes, 10 minutes remaining here in the fourth. Turks uh, trailing 34 12. Uh, versus the Hawks from Mount Lake Terrace. Well, we, got a, we just need a steady dose of uh, hard yards. A few turnovers. A few turnovers, yeah. yeah you know, can, and that, uh, again, is, as you well know, Brian, that's all part right. of the... All right, Derek, you have a, you have a great night, and uh, be, sure, be sure to say hi to Boston Briggs and Burke the Turk. <laughs> all right, Derek, good night. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for spending some time with us here on TurkPride.tv, your home for all things Sultan Athletics. Sorry, I interrupted you. But no, no. Uh, the, the problem, obviously, with a run-first offense is, is when you do get behind, it makes it a lot harder to come back uh, quickly because, again, you've got an offense that chews through a lot of clock, and uh, the clock is not your ally right now. Hand off on the right side, and Sailor with a nice game. Now, if you look at Terrace, you do not see one freshman on the whole team. I just want you to know that. They are three. Well, their enrollment is based on their, their schools are junior highs down there. Uh-huh. And so you won't see a freshman out there. I see. So they go 789 for the junior high then? Yep. They go okay. 789 for the junior high. Where we have a middle school format here in Sultan, which is 678. No, hard yards didn't get the hard yards on that one. I'm going to be checking the uh, max prep scoreboard here and see if we've got any change in the Granite Falls Kings game. Again, the, uh, the next, the last two opponents of the season for the Turks are playing each other, Granite Falls and Kings tonight. And as of right now, they are now in the fourth. Granite Falls still hanging on to that 14 nothing lead versus the Kings Knights. Handoff at the middle. He's not going to get it. Nope, dropped. But it's I think gonna he's going to be, gonna be down. close enough that we probably want to go for it here. <laughs> Grandma Hardwick's telling us, helping us find Mount Lake Terrace. Yep. That's oh, there we go. Is. There we yeah. go. Two miles north of Fred Meyer on 40th. Okay. I'm just a country boy. I don't get to the big city. I'm just very, a I don't get. I don't get to the big city. I'm just a often, I'm so. just a Turk fan. <laughs> Oh, nice run. Yeah, yeah. Heart yards for the first down. I have been very impressed with him. This is my first time seeing him this season. And uh, he definitely has been the offense for the Turks tonight. Well, he's earned he's earned the he's he's earned his he's earned the moniker that I put on him as as I've watched him play this year. And, uh, you know, and somebody asked me one time, well how do people earn their nickname? Well, sometimes it just fits. You know, but sometimes they, you know, they can do something that, uh, you know, that stands out. And he's just been getting hard yards for the you Turks. Just, you just stay up at night thinking of these things, I do. don't you? You just sit I there do. with a pad. And, oh, deflected, incomplete. I you don't sit with the pad. I just you remember. just sit there with a pencil and paper by your by your nightstand. And, oh, that's a good one. I'll write that down. Oh, that's a good one. I learned from the I learned from some of the best. You know, there you go. Kevin, the Kevin Calabros of the world, Ooh, the Dave Niehauses. The Dave Niehauses. The Ron Fairleys. I think I think Ron is Ron Fairley uh, a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> the Ron Fairleyisms. The Ron Fairleyism. <laughs> is, anybody doesn't know who Ron Fairley is, <laughs> look it up. Look it up. <laughs> That'll get you a long term contract. Captain Obvious. <laughs> if you want to win the game, score more points. <laughs> oh, he was very entertaining, though. Oh, you've got to kiss. You've got to get three, four yards of pop just to keep things, you know. Approaching the seven-minute mark, remaining in the fourth. Again, Turk still. Well, it's trailing. a point, You know what? Thirty-five, twelve. Your punter's cut. Uh, as of right now, there's no punter anymore. You, you might as well <laughs> you just. Cut? You might can as well just go for it. 
can you cut people in high school? No, or? you can't. Oh, okay. Well, you can, but uh, I'm just saying the putter I, doesn't exist anymore. Oh, okay. you, you take his take his helmet and his shoes away. Yeah, I mean, just, yeah. it's Caden Hardwick tonight. But you know. right, right, we just go for it. We always go for it on fourth down, right? Oh, oh, that seemed like his head snapped around pretty quickly there. Zane Saylor on the carry, and yeah, his head head kind of jerked back. Let's look at that. Thought maybe we might a little bit of a uh, horse collar or a face mask there on that play, but evidently not. No, you know one thing I will say is Brian, this has been a pretty cleanly played game. Very few penalties tonight. Very few penalties. Well, I've been impressed with the Terrace team. I mean, they came out, they went through their they went through their pre games. No, I think they they played well. They definitely were the. Uh, have been the better team tonight. Oh, throw that. Oh. Incomplete. I think the receiver. Well, he tackled him before the ball yeah, got was, there. Kobe Keeler was the intended receiver, and looks like he tripped, yeah, tangled up in the right about the mid, mid stripe there, and <laughs> fell but down. But hey, you know what? We didn't, we didn't lose yards on a punt. So. Yes, we all agree. <laughs> now, why, while we're talking, Brian, I want to bring in Ms. Fuller and, and Mr. Reilly. So how did you, have you voted in the, the conference realignment survey? North, south, which way you want to go? North. Mr. Reilly, what about you? South? Okay, so we've got three north and one south. So I'm sure we can continue this. Maybe in two weeks we'll continue this conversation. Uh huh. There's no perfect. There's no perfect scenario. No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. We're a one. We're we're kind of the odd the odd duck. Yep. Yep. You're right. No matter how we're you just, look at it, we're surrounded by a, a growing population I, I that think, haven't quite I think gotten out we, here I yet. I think we would be better even if we were one lower level. In a B, yeah. like a 2B designation? Why well, is it? No, there's only four. We just. No, it's not, okay. We just need to be like physically relocated like to Linden or something like that, right? And just be up in the, <laughs> the middle of nowhere. Yeah, like. Well, like well, Othello just, or Euphrates or let's something. Just like let's that, build. Right? A, let's build. <laughs> let's build a high school in Gold Bar, and then we'll play each other the yeah, whole time. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Oh. Oh yeah. At one time we Chelan. looked. At, uh, the one time we looked at the Car I think it's the Caribou League. Yeah, the Caribou League, which like you'd be Chelan, Okanagan. I mean, you're talking about some travel. Holy Quince, Christ. Quincy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there'd be a ton of travel in that league. So, because that actually, but that's where we match up. It is, and like I said, that's because if we could take well, what we we have three three teams that that are they're very similar. Granite Falls and Sultan are almost like identical to each other. I mean, rural communities, similar in size, just you know, we're like, and then South Whidbey fits nicely. But that's only three, and three isn't enough <laughs> to make a, a league. And so you got to find at least two more, two or three more, and oh, it's fumble. fumble, and it's finding those two or three more, without having to drive, three hours, that is the challenge. That's the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and we're we're talking about we're talking about you know sports, of course, and and that's why we're this here. is this is th this is an important part of the education of our students is how to be a part of something, how to work towards something, how to handle being successful, how to handle not being successful, how to handle not being the star, how to work together work for a, a common team. goal. Yep. And these are things support, that you, that you need. That these are things that you need when you get to the next level of life. And so on his feet. You know, um, you know, I mean, you, you've got kids that go out onto the, you know, onto the wrestling match, that on the wrestling mat that may win less than 10 matches their whole career right, right but they're back every year and going at it right. and i'm gonna hire that kid over the kid that won all his matches that's never been tested 
four minutes, a little over four minutes remaining here. Again, Turks trailing 35-12 against the uh, Hawks from Mount Lake Terrace. And we've appreciated you spending time here with us tonight on TurkRide.tv, your home for all things Sultan Athletics. Handoff. Well, I just got some great news from work today. You've been promoted? No, no. Uh, we just delivered, Boeing just delivered three new uh, tankers to the Air Force today. Oh, well, good. That brings, us, brings us to 20 for the year that we've delivered. Wow. That's a big deal for me because that that's, that's what I work on. Is that your, that's your line? Yeah. Uh, we got an update in the Granite Falls Kings score, 14-7. So Kings is on the board. We've got less than seven minutes remaining in the game, but 14-7, Granite Falls over Kings. And again, those are the next two opponents for the Turks. Granite Falls next week and Kings two weeks from tonight. And then that ends our season. And that will be it for this year. Yeah. Yep. Well, we, we do have, where are we at? We're going to Cedar Park Christian on November 1st, I mm. believe. I'm sorry, yes, we do have Cedar Park Christian gets uh, an, as an away game. But my our season ends in two weeks. Yep. You and me, we're we're gonna be here in two weeks. Yeah, we'll be here. Be here. Be there. Be square. Right. First down for. First down for the terrace, and there have been, with two minutes and forty five seconds to go, they've been emptying out the bench a little bit. Yeah, we've seen a lot of a lot of different uh, numbers out there that we don't recognize. We're having to use our our uh, roster a lot more with numbers that we don't recognize two and a half minutes remaining in the fourth well, okay. and off up the middle still on his feet I guess number 44 Xavier Lake I believe So we want to uh, wish all of the students a uh, happy homecoming tomorrow night, the big dance. Uh, we want the kids all to be safe, have a good time, enjoy themselves at the dance. And, uh, yes, be, be safe, make good decisions. Make good decisions, be safe, and have fun. <coughs> Another goal line stand ruined for the Turks. Third downs, the Turks like to hold here just to keep it a little more respectable. Now, what school district is Terrace in? Are they in the Linwood School? Edmund School Edmonds, District? Yeah. Edmund School yeah, District? In Edmonds. Which is interesting because their district office is actually in Linwood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they are the Edmonds School District. You think they'd be called the Linwood School District? Is Linwood High School in the Edmonds School District also? There? Yes. Yes. That's a nice facility <coughs> since they built that new high school. Yeah. You know they sold that they sold that land to Costco and yep. built a brand new oh, school yeah. and all kinds of things off of that. Oh yeah, they sold that piece of property for a chunk of money. Yeah. <laughs> they they know. made it. They did well, I'm sure, when they sold that piece of property. It was right there next to the mall. Yeah. My my dad lives. Yeah, I'm sure Costco dad, paid him a nice chunk of change for that piece. My of dad lives right <laughs> off of North Road there. And yeah. It it just always. Yeah, Costco went in there, and it just. And 
Still. And the PAT is no good, so the score is 41-12 with 49 seconds remaining. So, uh, so somehow or another, I squirreled this all the way to Linwood High School selling their property to Costco and building a new brand new high school out of it. Yeah, how did you do where, how, how did, did I do down, that? How did we get down here? <laughs> what did we get down this rabbit hole? Well, I think it has something rabbit to do, hole. I think it has something to do with 49 seconds left to go in the game and the Turks toiling. Oh, the big the big sale. The big sale, yeah. Yeah, the wind has definitely picked up here. Uh, gusty, breezy tonight. But for the Turks, really didn't make a big difference because they don't throw the ball that much. So no. the wind really didn't affect them a whole heck of a lot. But Caden Hardyard's Hardwick's had great a game. He's he yeah. is my clubhouse leader oh. for. I think we can call that right now. Yeah, well, yeah, that's Caden Hardwick is our TurkPride.tv. Yeah. You're there, Grandma Hardwick of the game. Congratulations, Grandma. Caden Hardyard's Hardwick is a. Uh, and hard hit Hardwick on defense. He is our TurkPride.tv player of the game. <laughs> All right. So take it to the kick house off, tie. Kick off and 49 seconds left on the clock. And this one will be in the books. Yeah. Student body still getting rowdy down there, trying to cheer on their Turks to the to the fateful end here. Bounce picks it up, hands it off to his teammate. Well, and the diverse didn't quite work the way it was supposed to. Yeah, that of wasn't the fact quite that a the reverse. ball hit the ground. Yeah, yeah, makes it kind of hard. But it's a good idea. It was a good thought. The thought that counts, right? Oh, uh oh, Ty's ankles hurt. Nope, no hard yards out there right now. Are we going to throw the ball here? There we go. Back to pass. Pressure coming. Roll to his right. He's going to keep, tuck and keep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh that's got a, a late, hit. late hit, probably. Oh. He made a good good call to step out of bounds there instead of taking an un unnecessary well, it looks like hard it's hit be in a game that's you know well out of reach. See what we got here while we watch it on our screen. Crack back block. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, all right. Well, when it goes bad, it goes really bad. Cheryl Hart, she's sharing with us, and she used to ride horses in the field that is now Alderwood Mall. Wow. That is, that is, wow. Times change. That's be the. And 28 seconds to go. I told you, Willie Bennett left, Willie Bennett right. What I've been saying, I've been calling for it for the last quarter. You have. They haven't heard you. It's like when you're watching football at home and you're screaming at the TV and the coach just isn't Tackle hearing, him. <laughs> just isn't understanding you. It's like, why are you yelling at the TV? Because <laughs> it makes me feel better. All right. Well, Brian, I wish our reunion had been had a better outcome than uh, than what we saw tonight. But I know the boys played hard, but uh, just come up short. So now you know you got to just.
put it behind you very quick because you got you got a big game next week, a rivalry game, a game that is very winnable. Um, now, Granite finally got stands on their turf field. Yes. Sort of. Sort of, kind of. It's not covered. They are aluminum. Yeah, it's mm. yeah, so, it's about half so the do, size. Now, do they like. play their games there now, or okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but Granite Falls, it's they have a nice turf field, but the 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 area where they put it is interesting because it's pretty small. There isn't a lot of room. He's scrambling, scrambling, stops, throws across his body, caught by Keeler. And that's first down for the Turks. Well, well, Grandma Hardwick, we, we'll see you in two weeks. We, we sure love our Turk football here at TurkPride.tv. Yes, we do. And, again, we hope you enjoyed tonight's game just as much as we enjoy bringing it to you here on TurkPride.tv, your home for all things Sultan Athletics. Well, they started the clock here. And, and yep, clock, they'll get one more snap off and... Oh, no, we won't get the snap off. <sighs> if offensive penalty. Yeah. Blow a flag with four seconds remaining in a 41-12 game. Brian, any comment about the officiating crew? Nah, I, thought they, I think they've done a good job today. Oh, wow. Wow. Don't die of shock. <laughs> Is this invasion of the body snatchers? Brian Atkinson not, not being critical of the officials. For those of you that haven't listened to my colleague before, that is, a, 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 you need to write this one on your calendar, all right? need to write it. <laughs> 10, 11, 19, Brian didn't have anything negative to say about the officiating. Oh, I never say anything negative about the officiating. <laughs> I, I just say things like, thank you for sending your, the Snohomish County sending their finest. Oh, uh-huh. Hey, uh-huh. So, so, Dan, everybody here at TurkPride.tv, thank you, you guys, for tuning in. As always, we love having you here, and we, we are excited to bring you this. Bring you this. If you haven't hit that subscribe button before you before you log off TurkPride.tv today, hit that subscribe button. Please do. Yeah, and, it's uh, important. You know, we gained a few subscribers today. You know, we're at 544. We started at 543, so I guess we gained one. Yeah. Um, you know, but tell your friends, tell your neighbors. You know, get everybody. You know. To, and for all of our sponsors here at TurkPride.tv, I'm going to let Dan take you out. But as always, for me, hashtag Turks first. All right, Brian, thank you. Very well said. So, again, uh, final score, not what we were hoping for, the Turks on the short end of a 41-12 score here at Homecoming 2019. We do appreciate, again, you spending time with us here tonight on a Friday night. We hope you enjoyed the game just as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you here on TurkPride.tv, your home for all things Sultan Athletics. For myself and my co-host, Brian Atkinson, we say good night. <laughs>